a new book which looks at the inside story of the collapse of the Tavistock's gender service for children claims that more than 1,000 children were referred for puberty blockers. There are also claims in the book that concerns were alleged or allegedly ignored to preserve a gold dust NHS contract. Former clinicians at the Gender Identity Development Service have detailed how some incredibly complex children were placed on medication after one face-to-face -face assessment, despite some having a variety of mental health or family background difficulties. Former clinicians at the service reflect for the first time in detail of their regret about the practice of routinely referring under 16s for puberty blocking and cross-hormone treatment with no concrete data on the long-term effects. Joining me now is former editor of Labourist Peter Edwards and the executive editor of The Critic, Sebastian Milbank. Now, Peter, those, are, those of us who would say that uh, embracing trans ideology too soon without any concrete data is, is bound to raise problems like this, uh, have been saying it for a while. Should, we have been, should it have been more obvious to us? Well, I don't use the word ideology. I think we'd all agree we want um, trans people to be treated with dignity. But I want to talk about the, the, the science of it, which is um, I don't see why it's appropriate, <coughs> excuse me, for anyone under the age of 18 to have life-altering drugs yeah. of this nature because it is very difficult to give informed consent. Obviously, the Sunday Times have run, in effect, a campaign on this reporting over many months and described today in a book extract um, regret and second thoughts by um, some of the children who perhaps may now be over the age of um, 18 who've, who've had these drugs, which, which are irreversible. But I, I come back to this point, which is I, and I'm sure everyone watching, wants trans people to be treated with dignity, but what, it's a failure of medical regulation for people under the age of 18 mm. to have irreversible changes made to their body. Right, and we've read in this report from the book that people were given puberty blockers as a thinking process, as a time to decide whether they wanted the, the life-altering drugs that came later, but pretty much everyone that went on those puberty blockers ended up taking irreversible drugs, didn't they? Um, I believe so. I haven't read the book. Um, I've read the extract in the Sunday Times today. Yeah. Uh, there are different ways into this, and I think... Uh, one of the points you alluded to is if um, a, a child has questions of this nature and lots of the children involved had other medical issues as well, perhaps like uh, mental health problems or were on the autistic spectrum, yeah. then there's a range of support they need before making this irreversible, life-changing decision mm. uh, um, about your uh, identity. And is that not the problem, Sebastian, in that... Mm. We are talking about a life-altering decision here, and we're talking about vulnerable children, the most vulnerable children in society, that a lot of them had been sexually abused, a lot of them mm. were mentally ill, a lot of them had you know, high traits of autism, yeah. a lot of them had family issues going on. Are we not letting down, or have we not been letting down these vulnerable children? We certainly have been letting them down. And <clears throat> I think the problem is that when you... Um, is that when... is that we, we look at all of the kind of all of the mismanagement that's gone on here, mm. all, of the, all of the ethically questionable decisions. And it's not that one institution has gone wrong, mm. it's that when you begin at the wrong point, everything will go wrong. Right. And the point that they've begun at is being willing to prescribe a drug, puberty blockers, which, except in very extreme cases of things like precocious puberty, mm. are not a medically appropriate drug to give to any healthy child. Because it, 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 this is stuff that will destroy your bone structure. Is things that will delay the normal onset of puberty. It has a huge number of psychological and physiological effects on the body that are incredibly harmful. You know, the, the well, we American, call them puberty blockers, but yeah. they're actually a chemical castration. Yeah, absolutely, and um, you know, the FDA. I think they have something like ten thousand negative side effects of this drug. Uh, and, I, and the suggestion that any clinician is giving this to a healthy child. That should never have been on the table. Right. Uh, and if you've got a process where you're giving a drug that under no circumstances should you be giving it to any of the patients going before you, and you've got to choose which ones to give it to, it's not a surprise that they weren't making good decisions because there wasn't a good decision to make in that process. Right. So, so bringing that back to Peter, I mean, you say it's not an ideology, but when people, after one face-to-face -face meeting, are being put on these drugs, it seems to me that somewhere along the line, people are wanting to affirm the trans movement and the trans ideology, as I would call it. Is it going to hurt future uh, young people who do identify as trans? Yeah, well, I, I didn't quite say that. I said ideology wasn't a word I would use because right. there's, there's different ways into it. But, you know, I think your question is really about what happens next, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Gids, the clinic, as I understand it, has, has been closed down. The, as often the case with campaigning journalism, there's been a wealth of coverage. Uh, I'd imagine that there'll be a government review, and I think we can all expect to see medical regulatory mm -hmm. guidance 
rewritten because uh, I'd imagine, and this is not at all a part of political point, it, it's hard to see a government and a Conservative government giving a green light to these changes for a child. Yeah, I think it's one of the biggest scandals we've seen in a long time. I could honestly spend the whole show talking about just this book, but we do have to move on. So I'd like to read a, report, a response from the Tavistock. Uh, we did reach out to the Tavistock and Portman NHS Trust, who told us, works on a case-by-case -case basis with every young person and their family, working thoughtfully and holistically with them to explore their situation with no expectation of what the right outcome for them might be. Only the minority of young people seen in the service are referred for any physical interventions. At the Tavistock and Portman, we wholeheartedly support our staff to raise concerns and have recently strengthened our mechanisms for doing so. Concerns relating to young people's well-being are taken seriously and investigated.